Welcome to Euro Bangla City, SATV News. This is Faisal Faruqi. First with our headlines. DMP detectives arrested second suspect in connection with killing of Awami League leader Tipu and college student Preeti. MBBS admission tests for five medical colleges in Dhaka City held today. Two people have been arrested over fake medical entry test paper leak. World Bank approved $250 million financing to help Bangladesh strengthen its policies to sustain growth following the pandemic. Dhaka Metropolitan Police Detectives have arrested a second suspect named Arfanullah Damal in connection with the killing of Army League leader Jahidul Islam Tipu and college student Samia Afrin Priti in Shah Janpur. Following a tip of a team of DB Motizil Division conducted a drive in the city's Komlapur area on Thursday night and arrested Arfanullah. A gun has been seized from his possession and Rifat Rahman, Shamim Deputy Commissioner of the DB's Motijil Division, earlier on Sunday morning, the DB police arrested shooter Masum Muhammad and Akash from Bogura while he was trying to flee the country. The accused who were included in the charge shit are Omar Farooq, General Secretary of War 10 Unit of Army League, Terror Musa Saleh and Nasir. The MBBS admission test for five medical colleges in Dhaka City uh, for the 2021-2022 academic year was held today morning. The test began at 10 a.m. and continued till 11 a.m. in the morning. A total of 61,678 candidates participated in the admission test in 18 centres in Dhaka. The test of Dhaka Medical College held with nine centres, while Sar Salimullah Medical College held in three centres and Shahid Sarwardi Medical College, Mujib Medical College, including Dhaka Dental College exams held in two centres each. Meanwhile, two people have been arrested on charges of fraudulence for circulating fake question papers on social media ahead of the entrance exam to public and privately run medical colleges. A North-South North University student was killed after a suspected hit-and-run on the Kuril flyover in Dhaka this morning. The deceased was identified as Maisha Mumtaz Mim, a sixth-semester student of the university's English department. Mim was heading towards the NSU campus on her scooter when the accident happened, said police. She was found dead on the flyover around 7.30 a.m. Police are trying to identify the van and nab the driver. The diarrhea situation has deteriorated in the capital while the number of people infected with the waterborne disease increasing in different parts of the country. The number of diarrhea patients has increased in different districts of Dhaka, Chattogram and Borishal divisions with the situation in the capital worsening further. ICDDRB has set up to Tens of cope with additional numbers of diarrhea patients, doctors and nurses of the country's lone cholera hospital are struggling to tackle the situation. The ICDDRB said from the end of the first week of the current month, 500 patients were admitted to the ICDDRB every day on average, which increased to 600 in the second week. The physicians advised people to drink safe water and avoid street juice and food to protect them from the disease. The World Bank has approved a $250 million financing to help Bangladesh strengthen its policies to sustain growth following the pandemic and enhance resilience future shocks. The Bangladesh First Recovery and Resilience Department policy credit supports fiscal and financial sectors policies to enhance macroeconomic stability and sustained growth. The World Bank said in a release, the actions will help Bangladesh to build resilience against future shocks, including climate change. New legislations will be prepared, strengthening the stability and efficiency of payment and settlement systems, which will also further digital and mobile financing services. The credit is from the World Bank's International Development Association, IDEA, which provides Concessional financing has a 30-year term, including a five-year grace period. Bangladesh currently has the largest ongoing IDEA program, totaling over $14.5 billion. Viewers, we're taking a short break. Stay with you, Bangla City, SATV News.
Welcome back and you're watching Euro Bangla City SDTV News. Pakistan's Information Minister Fawad Chaudhary said a plot to assassinate Prime Minister Imran Khan had been reported by security agencies. Earlier this week, PTI leader Faisal Vauda had made similar claims, stating that a conspiracy was being hatched to assassinate the Prime Minister over his refusal to sell the country. Vauda had made the remarks on media in response to a question about a letter PM Imran Bandesh a PTI's march to 27 power show in Islamabad, claiming it contained evidence of a foreign conspiracy to topple his government. Vada said there was a threat to the Prime Minister's life but remained evasive when asked whether the purported conspiracy to assassinate the Premier was mentioned in the letter. Security forces were deployed across the Sri Lankan capital today after protesters tried to storm the president's home in anger and the nation's worst economic crisis since independence. Police in Colombo said they arrested 45 people after Thursday night's unrest, in which one man was critically injured. A curfew put in place overnight was lifted early Friday morning, but police said military presence was beefed up around the city. On Thursday night, protesters lit tires on fire and barricade a main road into the capital. The White House has announced the largest release of the U.S. agency oil reserve, calling on oil companies to pump more to bring down gas prices that have skyrocketed even more following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The 180 million barrel release is equivalent to about two days of global demand. It will more than cover oil exports to the U.S. from Russia, which President Biden had earlier banned. Following Biden's announcement, the price of the U.S. benchmark West Texas Intermediate slid more than 7% a barrel, while Brent crude fell some 4.5%. Russian President Vladimir Putin says his country will halt its gas exports to European buyers unless they make payment in rubles. However, the demands were swiftly rejected. Germany, France and several other countries insist they will continue to pay in dollars or euros. In Ukraine, operations are underway to evacuate tens of thousands of people still trapped in a besieged city. Dalia Nilifer has the report. Amid tough economic sanctions put in place by the international community, Russian President Vladimir Putin is seeking to leverage the country's natural gas exports. Putin signed a decree on Thursday requiring unfriendly countries to pay for natural gas in rubles via Russian banks from April 1st. He added during his televised speech that existing contracts would be terminated if clients fail to comply with their obligations. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz meantime said he expects his country to be able to pay for Russian gas according to prior agreements, a reaction echoed by other countries like France, Britain and the Czech Republic. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, fresh efforts are being put in place to evacuate civilians still trapped in the besieged city of Mariupol. Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Irina Vereshuk said a convoy of 45 buses is headed to the city as Russia agreed to open a humanitarian corridor to Mariupol, where tens of thousands of civilians are still trapped. The operation is facing difficulties, however, as Russian troops blocked the convoy at a checkpoint. Besides NATO chief, Jens Stoltenberg said Russia continues to maintain pressure on Kyiv and other cities. He added that additional offensive action is expected which could bring even more suffering. Dali Nulfar, SATV News Desk. Now sports. Pakistan won the match needed to stay in the series against Australia. Pakistan defeated Australia by six wickets in the second ODI of the three-match series. Australia won the toss and elected to bat first at the Gaddafi Stadium in Lahore. They managed to score a massive 348 runs. Pakistan got off to a good start in chasing the big score. Imam ul Haq and Fakhar Zaman scored 118 runs in the first wicket. Qatar World Cup draw is to held today. 
The draw of the most popular event of world football will be held at 10 p.m. Bangladesh time at the Doha Exhibition and Convention Center in Qatar. The football world will be in full swing at the end of the year in the thrill of the World Cup. Qatar will have a battle of supremacy in November-December this year. The World Cup will be held for the first time in winter. The 32 participating teams will be placed in four pots based on the FIFA rankings. The top seven teams will be kept with the host Qatar. The other three pots will play with them in the same group. It will also ensure that no more than two countries on the same continent fall into the same group. The World Cup will kick off on November 21 at Al Khair's Al Bayt Stadium. The final will be played on December 16 at Lucille Stadium. Before ending, we go through Eurobangla City SATV headlines again. DMP detectives arrested second suspect in connection with the killing of Army League leader Tipu and college student Priti. MB-based admission test for five medical colleges in Dhaka City held today. Two people have been arrested over fake medical entry test paper leak. World Bank approved $250 million financing to help Bangladesh strengthen its policies to sustain growth following the pandemic. Viewer, viewers, you have been updated with Eurobangla City SCTV News. To know more updates, log on to www.sctv.tv. Thank you for watching.